Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self-study lessons. The first lesson has to do with exploring your amazing personality. One thing this website proposes is that you, as a normal, healthy, underlying healthy person, have a personality that is composed of some selves like players on a sports team or members of an orchestra. When people first learn this concept, uh, they're confused, they're perhaps skeptical or a little apprehensive. And a typical question that I've learned in 19 years of doing parts work, working with people's subcells, common questions um, are, well, what are my subcells like? Where do they come from? How do they interact? Can I change them? Uh, there's lots of different questions. The purpose of this video is to summarize some answers that I've learned across my 19 years to some of the most common questions. So let's start off with what are personality subcells like? Pretty simple question. The easiest answer that I've grown able to um, say is they're just like people. They have moods, they are cranky, they're happy, they have missions, they have a purpose, they have talents, they have blocks, they have alliances, they have hostilities, they have blind spots. Some of them live in the past, some don't. Uh, they're very much like people. There are three types of subcells. Inner children, plural, which are just like real children. They're reactive, they're naive, they're full of emotions, they react very quickly, uh, they often don't know much about the world, they uh, therefore are very gullible, gullible and very vulnerable. The th second group of subcells is guardians who look out for the kids 24 7 they're an amazing variety of guardians like a procrastinator a perfectionist a magician um, a cynic a skeptic lots of different kinds uh, they behave just like people the third group of sub cells is managers they are who make your decisions and give you thoughts and feelings when the inner kids and the guardians are quiet. All your subcells can go from quiet to active in a heartbeat. So they're very dynamic, they change all the time. So subcells are just like people. They have thoughts, they have worldviews, they have limits, they have talents. Um, the natural question that many people feel once they hear this is, well, if, if I have all these subcells, who am I? What is the pronoun I refer to? Who, who is myself? Who, who am I? The best answer I know to that important question is, you are you, and you is a composite of all the subcells, the rich variety of subcells that make up your unique personality. So you're not just one person. You're a combination, a fluid, dynamic combination of talents and limitations and ideas and values, memories, hopes, dreams, fantasies that come from your unique collection of inner players or subcells. So the next time you say, I feel angry, know that it's probably not you, the whole person, it's a part of you that's angry or sad or lusty or excited or confused. It's a part of you or maybe several parts of you. Another natural question that occurs to people who are new to this concept is, well, where do subcells come from? They come from outer space? They, we don't go to subcell school. What, how do they develop? After 30 years of wondering about this, my conclusion is Subcells, in reality, are portions of our brain. As you know, our brains evolve 
in amazing ways that we don't fully understand, starting before birth. Before birth and during the first four, five, six years of our lives, our brains develop synaptic connections at an astounding rate and with mind-boggling complexity. As our brains evolve and make connections and develop special sections, there's a section of the brain that decodes visual signals, another section decodes audible signals, another section decodes tactile touching signals. We have Our brain is really a collection of mini computers. What follows from that, observation, that is now well known and people have taken pictures of it with radiographic pictures. That it follows then that some cells in reality are simply discrete portions of our brain. They are programmed, just like other parts of our brain, to interact and process information in certain ways. So if that's what a subself is or a part of your personality is, then where subcells come from is your reaction, your attempt to survive your early childhood environment. Your brain develops in response to your moment by moment, day by day existence as a very young, malleable, vulnerable child who knows virtually nothing about the world. Your brain is designed to help you survive and in order to do that it develops these discrete regions that I am now calling subcells. Each region develops in accordance to your environment. It develops a special talent so you've got a group of brain regions each of which bring you a different talent. That's my best guess, and it is a guess. I've seen no research to confirm this, so take it as you wish. Um, wherever subcells come from, there's no question they exist. This is an idea that's centuries old. <clears throat> Socrates was said to have said, "My, I am beset by demons, D-A-E-M-O-N-S. Uh, Carl Jung, the famous psychiatrist, said uh, all humans past and present react according to archetypes. I now believe what he meant was subcells, personality subcells, which are true in human nature throughout the globe. So how do they behave? Subcells behave just like people. They get angry, they're hostile, they're shy, they hide. They try to control, they link up and form alliances, <clears throat> they're just like people. When you and I as whole persons interact, we have a whole team of subcells that are dynamically interacting to each other. So you've got 25 active subcells and I've got 14, so we have got a whole crowd of amazing, talented, parts of our brain interacting with lightning speed below our consciousness. That's how some cells interact in a social situation. Many people, as they get to know this concept, will say, well, what are typical sub cells want? Is there a pattern? <clears throat> My experience solidly over 19 years and talking with other clinicians like myself who have studied the same questions. The consensus, without any doubt, is your subcells want to help you. They mean well. There is no such thing, get this, there is no such thing as an evil or bad subself. Notice your reaction. Your cynic is likely to say, oh yeah, sure. How about serial killers? How about terrorists? My opinion is, and I say this not as a religious person, I'm spiritual, but not religious. People who do commit terrible acts of violence and mayhem in the world are not evil. They are terribly wounded psychological people who came from childhoods in which they never got their needs met. 
their parents were wounded, their grandparents were wounded, they inherited psychological wounds and ignorance, the first wound of which was to develop an array of subcells that blocked their true self. So what do subcells want? They want to help you. Often they are misinformed, so the way they try and help you makes no practical sense and often gets in your way. It's a paradox. That's all they know how to do. It's like they have very tunnel vision. I have to make you forget. I have to make you disorganized. I have to blank out and deny the fact that you have an addiction. They think that's trying to help you in an in a indirect way. Um, another question that occurs to most people thinking about this concept, trying it out, is well, if I've got a bunch of subcells and some of them give me, quote, bad habits, which they do, can I, can I change? Can I change my subcells? The resounding answer is yes, large red letters, yes, you can change your subcells. In practical terms, what that means is, just like you can learn a new skill, or someone who never saw a piano before can learn to play somewhat like Mozart. You can learn. Brains change. Brains take on new information. Brains develop new synapses. You can train your brain regions, alias your subcells, to process the information differently, to perceive the world differently, to interact with each other differently, and to trust your indwelling wise, true self. Parts, your subcells, meaning a part, can change. I can't emphasize that enough. You can do this intentionally using a technique that anyone can learn called inner family therapy. Lesson one in my website shows you how to do this. Another question that the skeptical part or the cautious part of most people's personalities say is, well, I don't know, uh, this all sounds great, but is there any danger? If I mess around with my son's cells, can I get in trouble? <clears throat> Once again, 19 years experience and listening to other people, other therapists like myself, the resounding answer is no. Meeting your subcells, learning to harmonize them under the leadership of your manager subcells, especially your true self, there is no danger. You cannot release some hidden terrible aspect of your personality and turn you into a serial killer. You can't go into a canatonic trance. That will not happen. Some cells want to help you and if you show them how to do it, they are usually enthusiastic once they trust you, which may take some time. Because you may have been operating for 32 years, 47 years, and your subcells haven't known of or haven't trusted your true self. Once they learn to trust, you can make real, lasting, positive changes. How do you know if your subcells trust and are following your true self? Many people have taught me when your true self is in charge, you feel a set of very noticeable, specific emotions. Like, I feel centered, I feel grounded, I feel light, I feel happy, I feel strong, I feel confident, I feel hopeful, I feel compassionate, I feel realistic, I feel light, I feel alert, I feel alive. Many people who don't know each other have told me versions of what I just told you. I have experienced this myself as I have worked to harmonize my own personality subselves. These are characteristic and they seem true across all the people that I've ever met. I suspect they're true of you. Have you had periods of time, five minutes, 19 minutes, a day and a quarter, where you feel versions of those wonderful feelings? That usually means your true self is in charge. When you're not feeling those things, a false self is probably guiding your personality. Lesson one in my website, Break the Cycle, sfhelp.org, shows you much, much more about personality subcells, who they are, what they do, 
how to assess who, who yours are once you 